I was perusing Facebook the other day looking for epic Gordon Ramsay memes because someone's got to do some work around here. Have you seen this one? Idiot sandwich. You can thank me later. And what do I stumble upon other than my favourite Aussie hood rapper Cursor responding to my favourite gold-plated state-funded welfare program for drug fuck children of the Bunyip aristocracy, Triple J. And I think you can guess how that interaction went down. Badookin back. Ugh, oh, mixed feel. Exposing one's guts is objectively fresh, however, we do have a strong stance against domestic violence here at the Jays. People keep saying Triple J plagued me yesterday. Don't do that, Triple J. Just don't. We don't service my music to you for a reason. You blacklisted me for years, then try and jump on the bandwagon when the scene I helped mould starts popping. Don't jump on board now, keep me blacklisted. Curse. Could you be any sicker? I love that when I was growing up, you heard all these broadcasters on Triple J bitching about gatekeepers in the music industry. And when I look back at that, I realize, no, they were just as bad as Australian Idol. It's just replace only giving you a record deal if you sounded exactly like Christina Aguilera with only allowing you onto festival lineups if you never washed your hair in your entire life. Because now, even lads are taking them to task. I used to think Aussie hip hop sucked. Cursor made me realize that was only Triple J sanctioned rap. This subcategory that can be best described as beta ginger rap. That sucked. But now that lad rap exists, Australia can safely take the mantle of inventing the new metal of rap. And if you disagree, that's fine. Because guess what? Music is subjective. If you're pissed at me, you should be extra pissed at Triple J's existence. That is just publicly funding some cunt's subjective taste. Fuck your playlist too. You can't try and block me blowing up and then 10 years later realize I'm the man and jump on board. Keep blocking me from the festivals, playlists, and everything else you've done over the years to try and fuck my career. Doesn't affect me. Don't jump on the bandwagon now. It's still fuck Triple J. Always will be. Preach you Zanny's inspired hit machine, see? This is why I've used Cursor in the past on my self-help channel as a shining example of the self-help principles in action. Triple J snubbed him because I guess their quotas don't include anyone from the working class. And unlike 99% of young musicians begging for playtime on a glorified nationally broadcasted mixtape like those cunts holding out baskets in Mad Max for water. Cursor didn't even try and steal the water, as you would have expected from his excessive amount of Nautica shirts. Fuck it, bro, I'm walking in the desert and oh, watch this, a bomb shelter lad. Yeah, bro, it's filled with Maximus, eh? Oh, watch this, a Twix, I'll just tax that and I don't even have to fucking tax it. There's no corner shop lady. While everyone else was making the exact opposite of art, tailoring their sound to be, have we moped about our anxieties enough? I don't know, mumble the lyrics just in case we haven't. <laughs> Cursor went out on his own, pioneered and popularized a sound, which is why he's had longevity as opposed to all of these flash in the pan triple J acts like the Rubens, Ocean Alley, Alien Ant Farm. Well, look, even a broken clock is right twice a day. The point is, they were completely dependent on the state, like this baby begging for Augustus' attention. Let us me King's Mill, please. What? I'm programming Double J's playlist. Look at the career of early 2000s band End of Fashion, or as I like to call them, End of Rove Live segment. Greatest Australian song of all time? Move over John Farnham. Hello. Me? Did I write that song? I remember frontman Justin Burford writing a post similar to Curses about how the Jays gave their first album sweeping support, made it to the top 10 of Triple J's Hottest 100 right year, that's how much airtime it got. And then after they spent all their money on the production of their second album, assuming Triple J would at least give them some airtime, they decided, arbitrarily mind you, a week after King's Mill had determined that pop is no longer a dirty word here at the Jays, it was played once at like 10 p.m. by some generic nasally cokehead that said, what the fuck is this pop shit? And never played it again. The band's release flopped. They went into massive debt with their label dropping them. And that was the end of end of fashion because they ironically became the end of a fashion. As Burford stated, no J play, no career and therefore took it down very quickly because that was the power of the Jays back then. So it's very nice to see that the balance of power has shifted so much in the favor of artists that they can now get their audience to chant. Doesn't matter if you don't like his music. 
That reaction should be celebrated by all because you no longer have to kowtow to a guy that takes your money to treat the Australian music industry like it's a fucking menu at a restaurant. Anyone that's been involved with the Jays has told me the same story, that it all comes down to the prince of scared hipsters, Richard Kingsmill. Why? What is his qualifications for arrogantly determining that he gets to decide what is and isn't the scene for four fucking decades? Is it looking like a geography teacher from high school that says he'll bring you up to speed on the study that you need and then never actually does? No, I possess the very esoteric skill of reminding people that Tame and Parlor are good. He should be a granddad. Sorry, but if you saw Pearl Jam in concert live, you probably aren't the most qualified to be determining how much to play Billie Eilish in a day. And yes, 35 year olds are always sending me that Batuta article about an old person being pissed off at Triple J. Dude, their audience is old. Their chief programmer is old. He's the Coke brother of the Australian music scene. Same age, just replace, I'm not a scientist with, mmm, that was a pretty tasty jam, but not very. Did he say pretty or very? Pretty. Fuck. Well, that's our career over. We had a good run though, right? Six weeks. I'm making the same point again that I made in the yours and ours video. If you're an artist, never ever kowtow to state-run power. It's the reason they're all forgettable cucks. You should not be feeding this machine of soft propaganda for a corrupt government. You should be following the example of this man that I am certain threw a chair at a teacher in high school. This point needs to be stressed. Triple J is not some benevolent institution that fosters artists. It's a goldfish that eats bubblegum. Nom 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 nom. Oh, 80s revival. That's never been done before. Oh, the flavor's gone. It's not tasty anymore. Oh, nom 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 nom. 90s revival. No, oh, the flavor's gone. Nom 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 nom. Oh, 80s revival. All the flavors of tone. Gated snare and distortion. Anyway, like and subscribe if you agree that finally, after a decade, Cursor has definitively proven that he is indeed the sickest. And come over to FriendlyGeordies.com and get yourself a Bruz as a penis keychain and shirt of Bruz smoking a koala as a combo pack. Why not? Gated snack. I like gated snack because my mum listened to it. I also have anxiety. Juno 16. Thanks, Mum. I went to Knox.